I'm Martin Tyler, and you're listening to Harry Simeon. It's finished up England at three, Senegal nil in the round of 16 at the 2022 World Cup. England in the end making light work of Senegal. It was a game that England were fancy to win. It was a game that England were expected to win. It certainly had the feel of a banana skin potentially going into the game. The Senegalese, I think, shocked and surprised a lot of people by making it through to the knockout stages because, of course, how good Ecuador were uh, in the early stages of the group. They battered Qatar really, really comfortably. And then, of course, gave a great account of themselves against Louis van Gaal's Dutch side. So to then come unstuck in the final group game at the hands of Senegal, I think surprised people. And it made people stand up and take Senegal very, very seriously. But you can't get away from the fact with Senegal that they're without Sadio Mane. And that was always going to damage their chances of pulling off a big victory like was needed tonight if they were going to book their place into the last eight. And that's a place in the World Cup that they've only been to once before in their history. But from an England perspective, is it coming home? Is it time to start wondering if it could possibly come home? I'm not going to go that far just yet, but it was yet another brilliant result and brilliant outcome from an England point of view. I don't think that the performance, particularly in the first 35, 36 minutes, was very good. I don't think it was anything to write home about. I don't think it was anything to get excited about. But in the end, England showed their efficiency once again when the opportunity came their way. Uh, when a second chance then came Harry Kane's way, England took those chances and put the game to bed. And this is the difference in quality that you see between the top footballing nations and those that maybe aren't quite on that level. Now, Senegal, of course, champions of Africa, but as mentioned, Sadio Mane played a huge part in that and has been their talisman, their inspiration, their leader for such a long time. And you could see that they just lacked that bit of quality in the final third this evening. Obviously, a couple of early chances for them. Uh, There was the uh, first one, that was blazed over the top of the crossbar from close range. There was the second one where a great save was forced out of Jordan Pickford. And that was a really good save, by the way. Don't underestimate how difficult it is to get not just an arm to that ball, but such a strong arm to make sure that you keep it out. So credit to Jordan Pickford. But you were looking at that England backline and you were wondering, you know, whether they were going to be able to contain this Senegalese attack at that point. Because any time a Senegalese forward injected a little bit of pace and a little bit of intensity and a little bit of, an, of aggression, England, in particular Maguire, Stones, they were struggling with that. And, and I did wonder whether a shock was potentially on the cards. But once England scored, it was very much one-way traffic. Jordan Henderson combining really, really well with Jude Bellingham. Uh, obviously, Henderson applying the finishing touch, just sweeping it into the back of the net. Uh, Harry Kane played a massive part in that goal, just dropping off deep as he does to such great effect and really setting off that move. Henderson having to bust the gut to get into the penalty area as well. Brilliant midfield play from him. And then, of course, the second goal, another well-worked England move. Once you break the deadlock against a side like Senegal, who want to defend quite deep, who want to be difficult to break down, who want to frustrate you, then those spaces appear because all of a sudden their game plan goes out of the window. All of a sudden, they have to commit more players forward and more bodies forward. And England took advantage of that with the second goal. When it came to Harry Kane, a player who's been criticised a lot in this tournament, but I think has probably been one of England's best players in terms of the way he facilitates others, in terms of the way he brings other people into the game, was never going to stay quiet for the duration of this tournament. And he popped up and scored a goal. And as an Arsenal man, it kills me to say that, but it was a really well-taken goal. And then the third one, of course, 57 minutes in from our star boy, Bukayo Saka. Had a good game, Saka, I thought up until that point. I thought he would look the most dangerous of England's attacking three. Whenever he got the ball in the wide areas, he looked to make something happen. He put a couple of really tasty deliveries into the penalty area. One where he was looking for Phil Foden in the first half. It was just over the top of his head. And there was another one where he whipped in a a low ball, right-footed, that found Harry Kane, who just couldn't keep his effort down in the end. But what about the finish from Saka to score that goal? I mean, talk about mature, talk about accomplished, talk about confident. When that ball came to him, he just dinked it over the goalkeeper, Edouard Mendy, knowing that he was going to come rushing out, knowing that he was going to have to commit. And he found uh, the back of the net to add England's third 
and essentially put this game to bed. But the question I asked right at the top of the show is, is it coming home? And based on tonight's evidence, although, you know, after 38 minutes when Jordan Henderson broke the deadlock, I thought England were very controlling, very dominant, very secure in pretty much everything they did. And then, of course, Gareth Southgate made some changes. Rashford, who was left out of the starting lineup in favour of Bukayo Saka, came on late on. Of course, Raheem Sterling was unavailable uh, due to some personal matters. Uh, Gareth Southgate confirmed that pre-match. You you just never felt like England, you know, were, were ever going to even come close to throwing it away. But as I say, in the first 38, 40 minutes, they struggled. They didn't play very well. They failed to click into rhythm. The passing um, just wasn't happening. It wasn't working. It wasn't happening. There was no cohesion to their game. They weren't able to move the ball around quickly or efficiently enough. And their midfield for large periods during that opening spell of the game, I think, looked lost. I think Bellingham looked lost. I think Henderson looked lost. Um, you know, I think that Foden was really uninvolved. And it depends who you want to pin the blame on. I, I've seen some people on Twitter really laying into Jordan Henderson. And then, of course, five minutes later, he pops up and scores the goal. But I think England's midfield in general just got lost inside that first sort of half an hour, 35 minutes. And against better sides, they'll punish you for that. And so although England, you know, they're the top scorers, I think, in this competition, they've scored 12 goals so far. They've conceded just two. That's a really good and positive return. I think when they come up against the bigger nations, the stronger nations, as they will do now against the French, I think they've got to be a lot better to stand a chance. I mean, I was watching Kylian Mbappe earlier today. If he comes up against Carl Walker, the way Carl Walker played today at certain points, if he comes up against Harry Maguire and John Stones, he is going to have a field day. So although it's happy and it's positive and England fans should be pleased that they're through, of course, to the last eight of the World Cup, and there will be talk of whether or not it's coming home and all of that jazz, that's fine. But I do think that it's important that still we look at this England side and we take stock of where they're actually at. And they're still not complete, in my opinion. They've still got things that they can improve on. But that's not a dig at England specifically. You know, there's so many teams in this competition that have been getting results without playing at their brilliant best, without reaching the levels and the heights that we know they're capable of. But when it comes to, um, you know, the, the game coming up against France, I think England need to improve significantly in a number of areas, if they're going to stand any chance of uh, of getting past a very strong French side, a French side who do play, you know, in second gear for large periods of matches, but do have the quality, not just in Olivier Giroud up front, who, congratulations today, became France's all-time greatest goal scorer. They've got the likes of Kylian Mbappe in and around him. And I don't think the guy's playable at the moment. I think he's the best player in world football right now. And I think he proves that every time he takes to the pitch. Again, a couple of goals today, uh, really, you know, showing what he is capable of. He looked lethal. I think that's the word to use when describing Kylian Mbappe. So great. England are through. Happy days. They deserve to be through. They were the better side overall tonight. But there were just signs in that first half an hour or so. Things that they need to improve on. Things that they need to be wary of if they are going to mount a challenge against the French next weekend. So, um Good luck to them. You know, I hope the run continues. I always say that the the atmosphere in the country when England go out of the World Cup, in terms of the World Cup fever, it does drop off a lot, doesn't it? So you want the nation that you live in to be in the competition for as long as possible. But, you know, it, it looks good at the moment. But I do think against the French, there needs to be significant improvements in the defensive department and in that midfield as well, where I don't think they got a grip on the game early on if they're going to stand the chance. So is it coming home? I'm not quite ready to commit to that just yet. But of course, uh, congratulations to England for making it through to the last eight of the World Cup. Don't forget to leave a like on the video. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you're new as well. Let me know your thoughts in the comments and I'll catch you all soon with more. Until next time, goodbye. I'm Martin Tyler and you're listening to Harry Simeon.